Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Christ Central friends and families. I hope you all had a wonderful week, and I'm so glad to see you again here today. We're going to start off with a quick activity. We're going to think of some names that you encounter or interact with every day or even every week. Some of the names that you can think of are maybe your teachers, your family members like your parents or your siblings, and you can even think of names of your friends that you talk to or see. I want you guys to list out these names. You can either write it out or you can call it out and share it with your family members. So. Uh, some of the names that I'm thinking of right now are some of the mommies that I share with and that keep me accountable to grow closer to God and to be more like Christ. So here are some names. Here's my board. I'm going to list it out. Are you guys ready? So there is uh, my friend Grace. This is Erin and Ava's mommy. There is Kathy, who is Jacob's mommy. Kathy. Another friend is Ashley. This is Logan's mommy. Ashley. Okay. Then there is, oh, Juju. This is Cassia and Zachary's mommy. Then there is Michelle. This is Reagan and Austin's mommy. Then there is Iris. This is Kai Kai's and Isla's mommy. So now, these are some of the names that I thought of, friends that I share with and that help me be responsible and keep me accountable to grow closer, like I said, to God and be more like Christ. So now, the question of the day is, how can you encourage the people all around you? Share and think of ways that you can encourage the people on your list with your family members right now. Great job, everyone. So one way that really encourages me and I know brings encouragement to all of my friends that I listed here today is by sharing prayer requests and by praying with and for them all together. That's one way that I can encourage my friends. In today's story, we're going to learn about a man named Barnabas who is remembered for encouraging believers in the early church. I recently learned that Barnabas' name actually literally means son of encouragement. Isn't that neat? So I want to encourage you all at home today to put some of the ideas that you just came up with into practice this week and to encourage the people that you see and interact with every day. Bye.
Hi Christ Central Kids, Hi Christ Central Families, it's good to see you guys. At this time we're going to recite the Westminster Shorter Catechism together. As a reminder, a catechism is a summary of Christian doctrines and what we believe in as Christians. And it's organized in question and answer form to help us better understand and memorize these biblical truths. So for today we're going to go over catechism question number 11. I'm going to ask the question once. And we're going to recite the answer twice together, all right? Question 11. What are God's works of providence? We're going to say that together in one, two, three. God's works of providence are His most holy, wise, and powerful acts of persevering and governing all His creatures and all their actions. All right, one more time. One, two, three. God's works of providence are His most holy, wise and powerful acts of persevering and governing all his creatures and all their actions. So not only did God create everything, he provides for everything. And according to today's catechism and the Bible, God's providence is holy, wise, and powerful. Let's think about the story of Adam and Eve and how God provides for his creatures. When God created Adam and Eve. He didn't place them in a dark place to live in, right? God put them in a beautiful garden, the Garden of Eden. And they had everything they needed there to be comfortable and happy. The moon, the sun, the water, food. God also gave them things to do there, to name the animals and to tend to the garden. And when you think about God's providence, we usually think about food, the clothes that we have, the family and friends that God provides for us. But there is something so much more that God provides for us. God gave us his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Because Jesus died, we are purified from our sins. If Jesus had not come to die on the cross, we would all be dead. But his blood washed away our sins and purified us. And now we have salvation in Jesus. Thank you so much for going over question number 11 today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your family worship. Hello, Kai Central. Today's Bible reading comes from Acts chapter 11, verses 19 to 30. So why don't you guys go get your Bibles and open up to Acts. I'll give you guys a few moments. It's called the Church in Antioch, and we're going to learn about Barnabas. Acts chapter 11, verses 19 to 30. I'll start off with the odd verses, verse 19, and then you guys read the even verses together as a family. All right, are you ready? Verse 19. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Verse 21, the Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Verse 25, then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. Verse 27, during this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. Verse 29, the disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. Let's read verse 30 together. 
This they did, sending their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. This is the word of God. Amen. God had called Peter to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they were or where they came from. So Peter shared the gospel not only with Jews, but with Gentiles. The Gentiles in Caesarea heard Peter's message and believed. God gave his Holy Spirit to these new believers, and they were baptized. Before long, the apostles and other believers throughout Judea heard the Gentiles had believed the good news about Jesus. They were surprised, so Peter shared about the vision God had given to him of the sheet of clean and unclean animals and his encounter with Cornelius. Peter explained that the gospel is for all people. Then the believers praised God and understood that Jesus had come for the Gentiles too. At the same time, Believers who scattered after Stephen's murder had traveled to places like Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, Syria. In those places, the believers only shared the gospel with the Jews. But some believers from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and preached the gospel to the Greeks too. God was with them, and a large number of the Greeks believed the good news. The church at Jerusalem heard about these new believers, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Barnabas was a good man. He loved God and was full of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. When Barnabas arrived, he saw that God was gracious to these believers. He was glad and encouraged them to keep following God. Even more people trusted in Jesus. Then Barnabas left Antioch and went to Tarsus to look for Paul. Mm. He found Paul and brought him back to Antioch. They stayed with the church in Antioch for a year, teaching large groups of people. Jesus' followers were first called Christians at Antioch. Even though some people tried to stop it, the gospel spread throughout the earth, not only to Jews, but also to Gentiles. The good news about Jesus is for everyone. God calls us to celebrate when others believe and help them know and love Jesus more. Welcome back, Christ Central families. Today we learned about a man named Barnabas. And remember, Barnabas' name literally means son of encouragement. The church in Jerusalem appointed Barnabas to travel through all of the cities to new believers as the gospel continued to spread all throughout. And do you guys remember, what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that God sent his son, Jesus, into the world to rescue sinners. All of these individual stories that we're learning about in the Bible, they all come together. They all fit together in a bigger story, a bigger picture of God's plan to rescue sinners through his son, Jesus Christ. For example, we learned about Peter and his ministry and how he met Cornelius and how the gospel is not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. And actually the gospel is for all the people. As believers continue to share the message of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit, the church in Jerusalem heard of these new believers, these new Jewish and Gentile believers, and they wanted to help them to grow in their faith. So who did they send? They sent Barnabas. They sent Barnabas to Antioch to encourage these new believers and help the church to grow. And through the Holy Spirit's work in Barnabas's life, Barnabas was able to challenge these new believers into serving the Lord. And he saw that so many more people trusted in Jesus. After Jesus's death, Early believers faced many, many hardships, 
but through perseverance, they continue to share the gospel of the good news all throughout, even though many people try to stop them and try to not spread the gospel anymore. Here are some examples of people that we know at Christ Central that have encouraged the church and believers in other countries all around the world. Hi, Christ Central families. Pastor Andrew here, and I've been on many missions trips, but one of my favorite places to visit and go to is Paraguay. And each time that I've gone with our team, it's been such a blessing and encouragement to both us and the Paraguayans. We can learn so much from each other. We're able to serve each other. And we're reminded that God's family is a global family. And so we have brothers and sisters all over the world who love and care about us. And one of the great ways we can even show that care now is by praying. That even though we're far apart, we can pray for each other and love each other that way. Wow, that is so awesome and so encouraging to hear about others trusting in God and serving the Lord by spreading the gospel and encouraging other believers in other countries. The gospel is not just for one person. The gospel, the good news about Jesus is for everyone. God calls you, God calls me, God calls all of his believers at home or in other countries to celebrate when others believe and to continue to encourage and help others know more about Jesus's love. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for the gospel and the good news. I thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, coming down to save us from our sins so that we may become closer to you. I pray, Father God, that you may use the Holy Spirit to give us courage and to use us, Father God, to spread this good news and this gospel and also to encourage our these new believers all around us, Father God, as Barnabas did in Antioch. I thank you so much for all that you have given us, and I pray that you will continue to be glorified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ Central Kids, I want to remind you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and dearly loved by God and precious in His sight. And I pray that you continue to grow as Jesus did in wisdom of God's Word and in faith in God and in friendship with people all around you. Bye! I hope you have a great Sunday and a great rest of the week. See you next week, y'all! Rob Wilton loves the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's one of the reasons he and his family moved to the city to be missionaries. But the Wiltons are not alone. They have joined with other families for the same purpose, to preach Jesus all over the city. In the beginning, the Wiltons' goal was to plant one healthy, growing church in Pittsburgh. But it wasn't long before God put something even bigger on their hearts. They wanted to see churches start across the whole city. The Wiltons realized this could only happen in partnership with the other families. God could use their individual experiences and stories to reach more people with the gospel. Now, the team in Pittsburgh is witnessing God at work in bigger ways than they imagined churches are starting and people are hearing the gospel and choosing to follow Jesus, we can partner with the Wiltons and the Pittsburgh team too. Pray that many churches will start in this city. So last week we learned that the gospel is for all people and that's why we have missionaries serving all around the world. Just like the Wilton family from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They want to bring the good news of Jesus to everyone. And this family has seen the gospel spread from New Orleans to Pittsburgh and beyond. And today we learned that Barnabas went to Antioch to encourage believers. And you can be encouragers too, like Barnabas, 
like Pastor Andrew when he goes to Paraguay on mission trips, like the Wilton family from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you can be encouragers too and share the gospel. What is the gospel, friends? The gospel is the good news that God sent His Son, Jesus, into the world to rescue sinners. What are some ways that you can encourage your friends in their faith? Can you encourage someone to come to church, to read the Bible more, to pray more? I want you guys to think of someone who doesn't know Jesus and maybe spend a minute or two praying for that person and asking God for an opportunity to share the gospel. Do you guys know that Easter Sunday is coming up soon? And what a huge day for us Christians to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I know that this year we might not be able to celebrate in person, but we still have our family worship. And this Easter, we're going to have our Sunday fun day Easter family worship. And do you guys remember that? We're going to have extra things. We're going to have a lot of fun things to do. And it'll be a perfect time for you to maybe invite a friend or a family to join us for our Easter Sunday family worship. So I want you guys to start thinking about someone that you could be an encourager to them to join us for our Sunday family worship. All right, thank you guys for joining us for today's family worship, and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye, guys. We will now end our worship with the Lord's Prayer. Boys and girls, do you know why we recite the Lord's Prayer? We recite the Lord's Prayer because this is how Jesus taught us to pray. It is what we believe as followers of Jesus and it reminds us to come before God every day and ask for forgiveness. Are you ready? Let's begin. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>